From love scams to lemon cars, Nazana and Paul Miladinus have pocketed millions stealing from innocent people. Tonight, our campaign to bring them to justice. It's Nazana, Chris Allen from A Current Affair, remember me? Can I ask you some questions? No comment, don't know what you're talking about. Is this another dodgy scam? How many more have there been? How do you lie straight in bed, Paul? Thank you very much, no comment. Meet Snezana and Paul Miladinus. Well, really, you've met them before. We've been following their trail of destruction for a decade. Yeah. Don't get that Any camera out of my face as well, please. Philippa Khoury would like to know where her money is, Snezana. I've just recognised the faces and just, just know that, you know, it's pretty hard to change a leopard spots. Would you say they're serial con men? I think that sounds pretty real. Philip Akuri lent Paul and Snez $55,000 to start a business two years ago. It was a six month loan and she's still waiting for her money back. Stop trying to threaten me, I'm telling you now. I'm not threatening you! When Philippa phones Paul to ask where the cash is, this is his response. Oh, four boys come to your house in the next few days, you won't walk for the rest of the week then. Okay. I don't play these games. What are you talking about? Is that a threat, Paul? And clearly in there, he, he threatens you. He said he'd send some guys around here and four, you... Four guys. Four guys and I wouldn't walk the next week. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Charming. Yeah. Paul, come out, you f***ing yeah. gutless yeah. You f***ing yeah. heap of Oh, get out of here, you we first met Paul when he was running a dodgy dating agency. That's him trying to hide from our cameras at his Hearts United office on the Gold Coast. Then Snares opened a restaurant and Neville, one of his angry customers from the love scam, chases Paul inside. He's a mongrel, he won't face the truth, he's just a lying bastard. Neville, a dairy farmer from Victoria, says he paid Paul's dating agency $120,000 over two and a half years and didn't get to meet one person. Person. No wonder he let rip. I'm the cleaner, mate. Oh, oh Paul, get away. Uh, Paul, you darkness pig. In court, Paul was found guilty of swindling divorced Sydney medico Dr. Neil Wallman out of $3 million. A Supreme Court judge describing Maladinus as fraudulent and dishonest. They come across like they really are doing you a favour. I've never been scammed like this before. After the love scam collapsed and the restaurant closed, Paul and Snares opened this used car business. Among their customers, Tamara Rath, who was pregnant when she went looking for a safe car to buy. They said that this was going to be a safe family car that I'd have for years. But it wasn't. Tamara says things went wrong with the car on the first day, and now a mechanic has told her the engine had been replaced and it's too dangerous to drive. I've had mechanics look at it and is that much damage done to the engine and things like that, that even they said if it could be fixed, they don't want to touch it because a lot could go wrong. And here I am left with a car that is nowhere near roadworthy or safe to be on the road. And Tamara wasn't the only customer complaining. So soon, Fair Trading were chasing Paul and Snares. Both of them were charged, convicted and fined for winding back odometers. The court heard in one case the odometer of one car was wound back more than 600,000 kilometres. And when it was sold, it netted Paul and Snares a tidy profit. Just not good people at all. I wouldn't trust them. I would never buy anything off of them. I wouldn't even give them the time of day. Some might call it karma. 18 months ago, Paul and Snez's car yard was mysteriously vandalised. And after the couple were convicted and fined almost $50,000 for those odometer offences, they gave up on selling cars and went into transporting them instead. I didn't look at it at the time as being risky, but I, I, I didn't know about their history either at that time, which was a bit of a mistake on my part. Kiwi Philippa Khoury is a business expert who moved to the Gold Coast to be near her mum. Paul hit her up to lend him $55,000 to help set up a car transport business called Auto Transporters. As well as the loan, Philippa says they were supposed to be paying her $1,000 a week in interest, which she constantly had to fight for. At one point I said to Paul, why is it that I have to beg every time I want my money? And I, it, I, it never came on time. And eventually they stopped paying altogether? They stopped paying. Um, coming up to that six month period, I was then asking for my loan money back, which was the original agreement. While Philippa was fighting for her cash, Paul was taking orders to deliver cars. 
Here he is loading some onto a truck outside his house. Trouble is, dozens of people started to complain to us that their cars took months, not weeks, to arrive, and in some cases, never arrived at all. How angry are you, Andre? 12 out of 10, roughly. Darwin man Andre Fisher paid almost $4,000 to Snez's company, which has now changed its name to AAA Transporters. They were to pick his car up in Taree and ship it to Darwin. It was supposed to take two weeks. Two months later, it hasn't arrived, and Andre has no idea where it is. Carlos! Hey, Carlos! Andre has been told a man called Carlos picked it up and brought it here, an overgrown field in Western Sydney. Andre's friend took this photo a week ago showing the distinctive Unimog with a smashed windscreen in the compound. But when he flies in to take it back, it's gone. How would you describe this business? For starters, I wouldn't call it a business. Uh, scam is probably the most polite word that I would say in front of a camera. Andre has now reported his car stolen to police. It's just disgusting. How do people how do people think that they can get away with this and not have any repercussions? Jessie Challen says she paid Snez's company almost $7,000 to transport four cars from Grafton in northern New South Wales to Perth more than three months ago. The cars, two work cars and two family cars, were supposed to be there in three weeks. But we found two of them still at the car yard which Snez and Paul used to operate on the Gold Coast. You know, you're talking about a family of four now left with no vehicle. Uh, we've had to borrow a vehicle. And I'm just feeling deflated and frustrated that a company can get away with this. Snezana, Chris Allen from A Current Affair, remember me? Can I ask you some questions? Snez clearly avoids our questions when we catch up with her. Is this another dodgy scam? How many more have there been? First there was the love heart scam then the used cars, winding back odometers. I just want them out of my life. You know, I don't, I don't want to wake up and think of them. Philippa Khoury took legal action to recover money she lent Paul and Snez. She has a court order for them to pay her almost $25,000. Philippa says it's less than they owe, but she just wants to move on. I just hope by people watching this, they can recognise, you know, that these two are bad news, that, you know, they, are, they will take your money and they will make promises and you won't see it. Well, police found Andre's car in Sydney over the weekend, but Jessie's car is still MIA, along with the money owed to Philippa.